conversion therapy, uh, as I said, most commonly carried out um, in religious settings, uh, uh, could also be done by mental health professionals, family members, um, and Again, I will quote this directly. In some cases, secular mental health professionals may treat minority gender identities, for example, non-binary, or minor minority sexual orientations, for example, asexual, as symptoms of existing mental health conditions. It's unclear how often this is a deliberate attempt at conversion therapy. I think it doesn't matter. I think <laughs> if you're looking at an asexual person who is comfortably asexual, um, or who is perhaps even uncomfortably asexual, and you're thinking, let's make you not asexual, instead of being like, hey, like, being asexual is like an option and it's perfectly okay and fine. Um, you know, if you want to try, you know, I guess like hormones or whatever it is that we covered in that asexual episode that we did go and check it out. If you want to try that, um, that, that is an option for you, but I want to make sure that you're comfortable in your heterosexual, in your asexuality, um, your potential asexuality first. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like th that, that sort of affirmative thing, because, you know, we talk about the sort of consent aspect of it. Um, can we really say that someone is actually genuinely consenting, um, when you know no. there's so much social pressure because yeah. if we look at the whys like you know the reasons that i've found the common reasons for seeking out conversion therapy um and again i'll read this verbatim a perceived incompatibility between someone's religious values and their sexual orientation or gender identity a desire to belong and feel normal within a community or external pressure or coercion by someone's family members or people from their faith community and some people report that when they like underwent conversion therapy voluntarily they still felt that the choices were shaped or sort of you know influenced by a uh, powerful um well, influences in their social environment and under guidance from authority figures. So even if someone is consenting, they're not necessarily actually consenting, mm. right? Because there are so many social pressures to sort of do the thing that they're being told to do in the same sort of sense of like, if someone is in an in abusive relationship and you say, hey, friend, um, do you know how your partner is abusive towards you? Do you know how they hit you? Do you know how they shout at you? Do you know how they treat you terribly in all these ways? And this person is like, I love them and I will stay in the relationship. Are they consenting to stay in that relationship? No, of course not. No, yeah, they're, yeah. they're not because mm. their consent is undermined by the uh, sort of power imbalance that is present there. In the same sense that if, for example, Harvey Weinstein says, hey, Luke, I will give you a film. Ah. Just let me um, just come into my hotel room and you go into his hotel room okay, and then you come cool. out with your film. Here um, I go. Did, is what happened in that hotel room consensual? Oh, no. I mean, probably not, right? Probably not um, because of that power imbalance mm -hmm. and the sort of... Uh, sort of influence that's being exerted over you. Um, and yeah, so I don't think it really is possible to consent to uh, conversion um, therapy or conversion practices um, in a in a true sort of sense. You know, you're not f really super free to make that, those choices. Um, it, really, if you're making an informed choice um, and understand what conversion therapy actually is, no one would really make that choice to cause that harm to themselves. And while you are allowed to make choices that can cause you physical and emotional and psychological sort of mental harm, there's there's kind of a limit there, right? Again, with the sort of abusive relationship aspect, right? You know, um, you can, you know, legally, I guess, make that choice. But to say that it's truly consensual, I think, is inherently flawed. So while the victim, like, can consent, um, it's not truly informed consent, um, realistically. Especially, you know, if you've been coerced into believing that homosexuality is sinful or a mental disorder or in some way degenerate, bad or undesirable. That's really ultimately the only reason that one would pursue sort of conversion therapy is if they see homosexuality or being transgender or any sort of non-normative sexual or gender identity mm -hmm. um, as being inherently lesser negative or um, coming with sort of uh, worse outcomes than being heterosexual or cisgender. Yeah, I guess. I mean, the, the thing is, I think when I'm thinking about this is like, I every time I have, every time I try to think of a person who might want to do that and might want to like knowingly decide to quote unquote convert mm. um i have to sort of invent a person who i don't know exists yeah i have to go like oh well imagine if someone was like had like sexual attraction to um uh, to exclusively men but then they had like romantic attraction to exclusively women i don't know if that person exists i have Probably. no idea um uh, maybe it does and, th and and that might be a situation in which like poly relationship poly yeah maybe i married my wife and i f
my husband i love it you know? like, <laughs> sure yeah exactly and even then it's like well that's still like you say that kind of thing not doing that would be because you're trying to conform to a social pressure mm. of like the monogamous model we have for relationships which we don't know we don't know if those it's just as stable to be in other forms it's just that most people conform enough that it's sort of carries on yeah no absolutely and i just want to take this moment to step up on my little soapbox and talk about transgender people oh, yeah. for a moment or more specifically uh people that don't like transgender people turfs uh primarily so i'm looking at the camera now hello um many people who are transphobic turfs they will say ah yes uh transgenderism is a form of conversion therapy. They take normal gay people who are confused about their gender identity because they're gay and the world is homophobic and they transition them into straight people and that's conversion therapy and that's bad. Shut up. And I am actually, that's my annoyed voice I'm using, okay? You don't get to hear that serious pissed off voice from me very often, but I'll use it now because I'll tell you what. Conflating letting someone transition affirmative gender care with conversion therapy kind of betrays a fundamental misunderstanding of what conversion therapy is. It is torture, okay? Someone who is undergoing conversion therapy is not really undergoing it willingly, right? There are pressures around them that are making them do that. And you could say, oh, there are pressures around trans people that make them be trans. Like, all of their friends are trans and it's cool to be trans. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, even if that were the case, uh, do, you not, do you not think that the second you are visibly trans in public, all of the social pressure against being trans trans would force you to stop being trans if it was so easy for like five or six friends who realize oh actually i'm not the gender i was assigned at birth if it was so easy for them to influence you into being a different gender do you not think that the massive overwhelming public transphobia would force anyone that was that easily led to stop being trans pretty much immediately. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Affirmative gender care is nothing remotely similar to conversion therapy at all because it is patient led. You ask the patient, hey, how do you feel? Do you feel this way? Do you feel that way? Here are the options that you have. This is what you can do. You can also not transition at all. Do you wanna know how I know that? Because I've read the actual things that people are given. I've read what Planned Parenthood gives out. I've looked into what happens in the UK. I fucking know what I'm talking about, okay? I don't think you do. I think you just hate trans people and you see conversion therapy and you're like, actually, that's a really useful tool for me to use against trans people. And if that's the case, fuck you. You, okay? Letting people transition, letting people be comfortable and happy in themselves is nothing like conversion therapy. It is nothing like the torture that thousands of LGBTQ plus people have had to endure because of social pressures to make them straight, okay? And if you're someone that even thinks of saying anything remotely similar to that, that trans people are using conversion therapy to turn gay people straight, shut up. You're a horrible person and I hope you learn better. Okay, I hope you can look back on this time and realize, oh man, I'm a I was a bad person. I hope you can look back and feel embarrassed because ultimately it's nonsense. It's hateful nonsense. And one last thing, um, gay trans people exist. In fact, a lot of trans people are gay. Okay, that's there. You go, nail in the coffin. Your your argument makes absolutely no f sense whatsoever. F off back to wherever you came from and take Robert. F Galbraith with you. Yeah, what Corey said. So back to uh, the effects of conversion therapy, Luke. Do you want to? Do you want to? Are, they, talk are about they universally bad? Ding, ding, ding. You got it. Yeah. No. Um. There is no report of change in sexual orientation, and reports of un of success are unpersuasive due to serious methodological limitations and sometimes major flaws in study designs. Almost as though incredibly biased people are trying to make <laughs> fake studies to make it seem as though the torture that they're performing on LGBT people or you know other marginalized groups um is actually a okay because that's not something that's ever happened in science before. Or a group of powerful people saying, hey, we don't like this group and we're going to use science as a means to oppress them. God forbid that ever happened <laughs> in the past, present or future. We don't have any episodes on that whatsoever. Wink. Anyway, um, yeah, no, uh, basically it doesn't work um, at all. Uh, from one paper I've got here, lifetime exposure to conversion therapy and psychosocial health amongst middle amongst midlife and older adult men who have sex with men. There's a study that looked at about a thousand-ish men um, and asked them about conversion therapy and uh, whatnot. And they found that 
men exposed to conversion therapy had two to 2.5 times the odds of reporting um, psychosocial conditions. Um, and basically, yeah, uh, the idea is that uh, it being exposed to conversion therapy makes you not good. It makes you sad. Um, there's lots of trauma that can come from it. Um, a study on transgender people found that those exposed to conversion therapy were more likely to be unemployed, have a lower household income, have an increase in... Um, self-deletion attempts and lifetime history of suicidal ideation and mental distress. Uh, also, conversion therapies can encourage family rejection, which plays a role in poor mental health and substance abuse outcomes. Uh, and if we talk about social prejudice as well, there's lots of evidence that societal prejudice causes significant medical, psychological, and other harms to LGBTQ plus people. I've actually got some data here for you on that. Um, this little study that was done, I think, by San Francisco State University, they found uh, that uh, compared to LGBT young people, people who were rejected by their families compared to those who weren't rejected by their families, um, uh, there are, there's more than eight times, uh, they're more than eight times as likely to have attempted suicide, nearly six times as likely to report high levels of depression, more than three times as likely to use illegal drugs, and more than three times as likely to be at high risk for HIV and STDs. Um, yeah, so uh, being sort of disowned or not accepted by your family, not many good outcomes there. Who um, could have known? I don't know, Luke. This is all, this is all crazy to me. This is all <laughs> brand new. It's, it's absolutely mad. Um, yeah, basically what we found is the efforts to change people's uh, sexuality, their sexual orientation, is bad. It doesn't do much to help them. It just causes uh, trauma, mental distress, um, lots of harm, poor mental health outcomes. Oh, and also doing that for um, gender identity, um, which people are very much behind doing, by the way. There are plenty of people oh, yeah. out there who are they say they're therapists and they're like, yes, uh, we don't like the affirmative model of gender care. So what we do is we do therapy to really root out the problem and convince these people that they're not trans. Some of them are trans. In fact, a lot of them probably are trans. Stop trying to talk them out of being trans because you don't like trans people, freak. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> as I was saying, Luke, um, these forms of uh, sort of conversion therapy, let's call them what they are, uh, there's less data on them, but the data that we do have... Can you guess? Oh, I think it's 100% effective and actually very sexy. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Well, yeah. you'd be dead wrong, Luke. Oh, no. I guess you got to join your best mate, Robert Galbraith, that uh... transphobe who may or may not have written a book series. <laughs> and I need to get a new job. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um, do you want to you say what your opinion is seriously? Uh, my opinion, seriously, is that I think it will be as effective, maybe even less effective than uh, gay conversion therapy. Um, I don't think it will work. I think it just causes a bunch of trauma. Um yeah, that's. I think it's exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much there, mate. Pretty much. Um, yeah, and so that is more or less it. Um, I had a little section on uh, trans uh, conversion therapy, but like ultimately we've kind of covered it, and we could probably do an oh, entire episode, episode yeah. in and of itself. But the fundamental thing here is we need to protect all LGBTQ plus people um, from conversion therapy, whether they're transgender, whether they're, you know, non-binary, whether they're gay, straight, lesbian, queer, intersex, I don't care. If they're under the LGBT umbrella, you're not touching them with any conversion therapy over my dead 